This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. The place where Sakaki spends her off days isn't far from the Academy. Follow the footpath from our front gate until it turns to the south, then walk 300 meters or so along the prefectural road down to the sea, and you're there. There are a few obstacles and nothing in the way of blind spots, so it's not much of a challenge as an observer. Oh, Yumiko, you're going down this road too? What a coincidence! <laughs> Sakaki's been shooting frequent looks over her shoulder in my direction ever since we left. I'd guess 60% of the reason is her hoping to find some opportunity to slip away and escape my surveillance. The other 40 is pure anger. Did something pop up on my screen? Nope, it just flashed black for a few, a little bit. As for concern on behalf of her bodyguard, clearly not even a single percent. In fact, the day after I admitted the truth, Sakaki tried to run away from me the moment that she saw my face. The girl's only an amateur, so naturally it didn't take long for me to catch up. But since then, she's been constantly watching for another chance. Can't be too careless. Easy enough to catch up to her after she bolts, but there's always a possibility someone will attack her in the meantime. Far safer to constantly keep an eye on her. I'm on the job, after all. They'll cut my wages if I slack off. Sakaki heaves another heavy sigh, then heads for her destination with a slightly quickened gait. Easily matching her pace, I follow in silence. Yeah, this guy runs like a marathon every week, so you're not going to outrun him. After less than ten minutes of walking, we arrive at the riverbank. The river is called the Shinozaki, a smaller Class B river that flows down to the coast at Mishima Cape. Since we're close to where it meets to the sea, it's fairly wide here, with a moderately sized bank on either side. This is actually a new CG, or a new BG. I haven't seen this background before. This is cool. None too far away, one of the East Beach Express lines owned by Sakaki's family cuts across the water. Even 30 minutes or so, or every 30 minutes or so, a two-car diesel train rumbles across the Iron Bridge. Oh, the East Beach Express company makes railroads. Maybe. Exhaling softly, Sakaki lowers the tote bag in her hand to the grassy ground. I can't remember if they mentioned that they make railroads back in, like, the intro route, or if this is just coming up now. She settles herself down next to it, retrieves uh, colored pencils from inside, then props her b 4 size sketchbook against her knees. And looking straight out at the scenery before her, she begins intently moving her pencils across the paper. <gasps> Ooh, CG time! Oh, she looks so ticked. <laughs> Oh, wow. We actually get to see Yuji as well. Wow! I'm not sure if I can use that full CG as a thumbnail, though. It looks a little lewd. Also, what the heck is with you? Yuji, how are you standing like that? <laughs> what the heck? He's a, This is not standing straight up. He's, like, standing, but he's, like, angled backwards at, like, a 50-degree angle. How is he not falling over? And why are there all these crow feathers around? Did did we just shoot a crow? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> she looks so freaking ticked. <laughs> She's like, I don't want you here. He's just like, <laughs> so uh, you want to draw me? <laughs> no. <laughs> wow. I only learned this after becoming Sakaki's guard, but the reason she abruptly leaves the campus for hours at a time is a very simple one. She draws pictures. Looks like he's trying to fall. Yeah, I know! But how are you staying up like that? Maybe she didn't want her classmates to know about her hobby. Maybe there's some other reason. Either way, I'm just glad she wasn't coming into contact with any strange characters. No, nobody was offering her free starbursts out of their van. It's fine. In that scenario, there would have been a lot of troublesome preliminary cleanup to take care of. But JB probably would have warned me if the girl was up to anything too risky. I'd never been that worried about her activities, in other words. More like mildly curious. Sakaki's approach to her art is straightforward and orthodox. She begins by roughly sketching out the scene in general, then proceeds to fill in details little by little. I'm always impressed when people can draw nice pictures, because I suck at art. I am RD, I am not artist. So, I can't draw to save my life. Like, my little avatar. That I made in like 50 seconds in MS Paint, that's probably the best I can do. Like, I, I can't really do anything better. That's why my avatar is so simplistic. <laughs> well, she's not quite on the level of a dedicated art student, but judging from what I've seen of her work, the girl has a good amount of talent and skill. <laughs> she really wants us to leave. That said, I don't have much of an eye for art. I can tell she's good on a technical level, but I don't have many other impressions. 
Even if I did, expressing them would probably only irritate Sakaki further. Nice weather. Heading far enough back to not get in Sakaki's way, I look up into the sky, feeling the sun beating down on my face. I especially love all the crow feathers around. The latter half of July is always pretty hot, especially in this area. Nice refreshing scenery and all, but it's not the most pleasant season. I'd take that over Michigan winter. Just, just saying, I'll trade you that any day. It's so hot today. This is why I decided to wear long pants. <laughs> Makes perfect sense. Also, they're both wearing their school uniforms, but they're not in school. Weird. Drops of sweat, the blazing summer sun, a vibrant picture taking shape. I shake my head to dispel the shadowy wisps of memory floating to the surface of my mind, and then I return my attention to the subject of my surveillance. The sun sinks into the horizon as if sliding gently down the slope of a mountain. All of a sudden, the area is bathed in orange light. Perhaps taking that as a signal of sorts, Sakaki gathers up her materials, stretches out her legs for the first time in hours, then slowly gets to her feet. Meh. Mm. The place must be as hot as it is in Arizona. That, or he just isn't judging it being hot compared to Arizona, but just hot compared to other areas in Japan. Hey. Oh, that's her saying it. I thought that was Yuji being like, hey. <laughs> and kicking lightly at the ground in apparent irritation, she speaks to me. Did you want me to make conversation? You came here to draw. Once I'd confirmed that you weren't going anywhere, I didn't have any reason to bother you. That's right. Talking to your client more than necessary would be an expression of personal interest. When that's not relevant, the bare facts are enough. What's wrong? Sakaki turns her back in a somewhat grumpy fashion, hefts her tote bag from the ground, and then begins to walk off without much, so much as a word. I follow her quick, irritated strides at a similarly rapid pace. My investigation of Sakaki Yumiko's movements and protection of her person continued along those lines. Sakaki fundamentally ignored me. When she did talk, it was mostly hostile questions or arbitrary complaints. The atmosphere was badly strained, to say the least. And gradually, the complaints began to grow more frequent and more aggressive, culminating in an incident about one week later. Ooh. Today, Sakaki seemed even more irritable than usual. She was reading in the lobby from early in the morning, and before noon she headed out to sketch at the riverbank. In other words, the two of us have been alone together more or less all day. Seems to have grated on her nerves. Stopping her drawing in the early evening as always, she gathered up her belongings more rapidly than usual, then stomped up to me and began to vent her spleen. Not to worry, I have basic manners. I made sure to avert my eyes from any potentially shameful actions on your part. He doesn't, because he has the social skills of a brick. I'd been intending to smooth things over, but I seem to have poured oil on the fire instead. This is something I've been vaguely aware of for a while now, but it seems I have a bad habit of enraging women over the strangest little things. Yeah, because you talk about dumb stuff a lot. All the more pathetic because it's usually the result of well-intentioned words backfiring rather than actual maliciousness on my part. Yeah, right. Let's be honest. <laughs> Didn't want to tell you, but there's a man at legs around here, and he will destroy you if I'm not here. Mm. Well, you do have money on you, though, don't you? That's beside the point! <laughs> From the start, Sakaki had insisted that she didn't want protection, but now she tries out a different objection. To be sure, I haven't picked up on any more concrete threats approaching Sakaki in the week that I'd been watching over her. It'd be too late to start protecting you after something happens. A bodyguard is a preventative measure. Not much good in installing a burglar alarm after someone's cleaned out your safe, right? Yeah. 
But today just might be the day that changes. Alright, in that case, take a look behind you. Sakaki starts another angry retort, but swallows her words as she notices that I've said something strange. There's been something wrong with this picture for a little while now. Sakaki, too, seems to have finally caught the scent of something strange in the air. With timid, uncertain movements, she slowly turns her head to look behind her. <gasps> Ooh! Now this is what I've been waiting for! Action! Oh wow, there's five guys. They look nice, don't they? They look so nice! <laughs> yeah, hey guys, we just wanted to let you know that there's a new Marco's Pizza opening up in the area. You should definitely try it out. Okay, see you later, bye. Oh, thanks man, I appreciate it. <laughs> wow, five guys! This is where they're gonna try to beat uh, her up, I guess. Wow. This is cool! I like this CG. This is a great CG. This is a really great CG. <laughs> we got action, we got Yuji being like, Oh no, I'm gonna have to beat some people up. And then she's like, Oh shoot! He actually was right. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and of course it's angled at a 45 degree angle just to add that cinematography that we want, are looking for. Oh no. We, well, I gotta deal with super thugs now. Oh, this is exciting. And awesome music as well. A group of blatantly suspicious looking men in black suits stare right. Yeah, could you have picked more suspicious looking guys to go and nap her? <laughs> She's like, okay, guys, let's let's wear the most suspicious feeds possible. Let's all wear, like, a full suit and, like, scowls with sunglasses and look mean. All right, boss. Sure thing. They're not even trying to hide what they are, which probably means they're planning to take forcible measures. Only reinforcing this impression, the unmarked van parked next to their car on the road above. Standard vehicle for carrying off a kidnapping victim. It also says, we're gonna grab you on it. <laughs> These gentlemen don't strike me as the most peace-loving bunch. Even without the van and the suits, it's clear enough from a glance at the lead group that the <laughs> at the lead group that these guys aren't here for a calm negotiation. A brawny man, strikingly wide in the shoulders, towers at the head of the pack. At his side, there's a man with bandages rolled around his fists, probably gripping something hard. A third keeps his arms dangling loosely at his sides in the manner of a martial artist, waiting and watching for us to make a move. Even if they came out with a good evening, could you spare a moment to talk at this point? It'd be hard to take it off as anything but a sarcastic provocation. <laughs> Sakaki's tone of voice has grown distinctively uneasy. Faced with an unfamiliar atmosphere of danger, her normal, cool-headed indifference has melted away. She has unconsciously grabbed a hold of my shirt, and there's clear fear in her eyes. Well, I don't have much value as a commodity, so I think it's safe to assume they're after you, Sakaki. You can make excuses if you want, but I don't think they're going to change their objective. Sakaki's hand grips my sleeve even more tightly. The men approach slowly and silently, eyes fixed intently on us, looking for the right moment to take action. The three in front seem like the main threat. They've got five of us hanging back as a support. There's uh, eight of them, including their drivers. But that doesn't we seem. But that group doesn't seem to have any combat experience. Listen very carefully, Sakaki. Drawing my face close to Sakaki, I push her long hair away from the side of her head. A shapely white ear emerges from its hiding place behind the black curtain. I speak a few quiet words, in, blunt words, into it. Stay down. Make yourself as small as possible, and keep yourself behind me. Just do it, alright? Unless you're eager to take a ride with these charming people. Skaki's question falters off halfway through, but her meaning's clear enough. I offer her a firm, empathetic nod. Nad, nod. I can handle eight. No, you can't! No human being could handle eight. This is ridiculous. Might be a little frightening, but deal with it. Unless they, unless all of these guys are literally just like, alright, now we'll attack this guy one at a time, wait for him to finish beating us up, and then move on to the next guy. <laughs> like, if they if they just tag team us, there's nothing Yuji would be able to do. It'll be fine. Just do what I told you. In that instant, as Sakaki tries to continue her objection, the man with the physique of a rugby player who'd been standing at the head of the pack rushes forward, aiming to tackle me to the ground. Get down, Sakaki! As soon as Sakaki throws herself face down to the ground, I dodge an the enormous man's charge like a torador, evading a bull. 
Duh! I'm so bad at this! Apparently Rugby Man wasn't expecting such a well-timed sidestep. He makes a strange little grunt at the momentum as the momentum carries him past me. Nice broad back you've got nice broad back you got there. Before he can begin to turn, I sharply drop my right elbow downward into his oversized spine. <laughs> they did come out of Men in Black. I have you have to admit though, it makes for a nice big target as well. Rugby Man exhales roughly, then collapses face first into the dirt. That's one, for starters. Confirming that my oversized friend isn't getting back up anytime soon, I whip around 180 degrees to face the other attackers. Bandage Hands here has a different style. He's spitting out short pants at regular intervals, bouncing slightly from side to side in time with the rhythm. This one's shorter than me, but his body's abnormally slim in life. His physique suggests extraordinary agility. From his stance, with his right arm slightly below and behind his left, it's clear that he's an experienced boxer. And he's really far away from us, as you can see. He keeps stepping towards us, but he hasn't arrived yet. If he lands a punch, it's probably going to be a bone fracture or internal bleeding. A slugging match with a boxer is never a good idea, let alone when he's grasping something. In other words, I need to dodge until I have a chance to launch a disabling counterattack to a weak point. The tempo of bandage hands as breathing grows steadily quicker. As he slowly begins to close the distance between us, his slight movements of the body begin to include something of a forward backsway. They're literally just attacking us one after another! How, how stupid are these people? He's coming! The man exhales heavily and springs forward, his half-hidden right hand shooting out toward my face. No, he has a gun. Blam. We dead. <laughs> I duck my head just barely enough to avoid the punch. Now, within range, he follows up with a wider swing from the left. That's what I was looking for. Cleanly evading the second half of his predictable combination, I slide forward to point-blank range and land a violent kick to his shin. <laughs> see? See, like I said, moments like this are great! They're well written and they're exciting, and like I love going through these. I just hate all the inappropriate dialogue. As Bandit Chance freezes up from the pain, I step back, pivot, and swing my fist into his right flank, throwing my whole body into the punch. Spittle and a strangled little grunt spray from the boxer's mouth, then his eyes roll back in his head and he collapses heavily on the ground. Cool, we've killed two people. Should probably stay down for a while after taking a direct hit to the liver. Before the others can react, I've resettled myself at Sakaki's side. Two down. I look over at the final remaining member of the attacking team. Although there's a hint of shock in his expression after seeing the others go down so quickly, his composed posture suggests a fundamental confidence. He clearly thinks himself on a different level from those two. His peculiar stance, involving constant movement of his limbs, reminds me strongly of the Chinese Ken Pao my master taught me back in the day. This one's aiming at a counter himself. I can picture him smoothly sidestepping the instant I try to lunge forward. The loose swaying of his body might not look particularly intimidating to an amateur's eye, but I'm more confident he's more dangerous than the others. Well, let's try a trap. Imitating Rugby Man, I spring forward like a splinter, charging directly at the martial artist. <laughs> he instantly slips away from my attack with a triumphant little laugh. From the side, he fires off a sharp kick aimed at my pivot leg. Took the bait! I swivel to my gr to grab his extended leg, then twist it roughly in my arms, bringing him back to the ground in a leg lock. Specifically, it's a heel hook of the sort frequently seen in your nastier mixed martial arts competitions. I twist his foot back with my arms, causing agonizing pain that would normally inspire a quick tap out. Of course, this isn't a match, so it's not an option. The man desperately uses his free leg and arms to attack me. But with his heel completely immobilized, it's impossible to gain the leverage necessary for an effective blow. Sorry, but I need you to settle down for a while. Bringing the strength of my arms to bear, I bend the man's, man's heel sharply to the side. The joints of his ankle crack loudly, and his foot turns in a direction nature never intended it to. The man lets out a strangled little scream, and I feel the fight go out of him. When I release the hold, he instantly clutches his ankle and rolls around on the ground, tears streaming down his face. That's everyone! There are definitely five other guys. Rising quickly to my feet, I place my body protectively in front of Sakaki's. The only men left standing nearby are two members of the support team. I glower at, up at them expectantly. But the remaining men keep their distance, watching warily and hissing to each other in flustered voices. What they signed up for? Maybe the kidnappers hashed out internal contracts or something of the sort. Nothing I need to be too concerned about at the moment, I suppose. We're going to run away now, Sakaki. 
I pull Sakaki by the hand and run up the sloping bank toward the street above. Sakaki quickly runs out of breath, but pushes herself desperately forward, barely managing to keep up. After reaching the road, I shoot one quick glance over my shoulder at the group of men we left behind. The remaining members are helping the battered fighters back into their vehicles, rather than pursuing us. Concluding that they're backing off for now, I set off at a rapid jog toward the dorm, towing Sakaki along behind me. Ooh, that was exciting! They were definitely stupid for only attacking us one at a time, though. If the three main attackers had gone at the, to, for me at the same time, again, there's nothing they could have done. Although the men didn't seem to be chasing us, just to be on the safe side, it took a number of brief detours on my way back to the campus. The sun had just been setting as we left, so by the time we finally reach the gate, it's already dark out. Bursting into the dorm in this state would just alarm everyone, and I don't think Sakaki's looking for more of a fuss right now. Instead of running straight into the lobby, I lead her to the courtyard. You alright, Sakaki? Finally releasing her hand, I ease Sakaki down onto a bench to rest. Oh, yes! It's the epic music. The girl makes an admirable effort at keeping up a tough front, but after all that running, she's understandably fatigued. Something? That's pretty vague. You're referring to my scuffle with those gentlemen? Sakaki silently nods her head. Well, I've been trained on how to deal with people proficient in various skills. It's kind of relevant to my line of work. In my profession, you naturally meet people with a wide range of experience in this regard. Former Dan Rank... Uh, Dan Rank Kenpao practitioners, karate experts who made it to the Nationals. Sometimes you'll even run into guys who competed in the World Championships of something or other. Naturally, the same goes for our organization's competitors and professional rivals, so the instructors teach you a wide variety of coping strategies covering more or less the full range of martial arts. And by taught, I mean they beat the techniques into you. I myself suffered more than a few lessons that very nearly end ended in bone fractures. She mutters the words without a hint of ridicule, in a tone of complete conviction. This is a world Sakaki knew nothing of until now. It's simply outside her range of experiences. Even if she understood in an academic sense that people like that existed, personally coming into contact with them has clearly driven home just how real and unpleasant that world is. So there's her wake-up call. You understand now just how much danger you're in? Skagi nods with uncharacteristic honesty. She's like, I don't need a bodyguard, I just need a Glock. Why not? Yeah, that's why you were hiding behind me with that scared expression in the CG. Her expression changes. The fear is fading, leaving something gloomy and bitter in its place. Just like the other day, I can see a hint of defeat in her eyes. Sakaki brushes off a few clumps of earth from her skirt, then opens her bag and carefully returns the colored pencils scattered loosely inside to their box. When that task is accomplished, she takes the bag in her hand and rises abruptly to her feet. And with this brief announcement, she strides quickly off in the direction of the dorm. But... Sakaki stops dead about four paces away. After a moment's hesitation, she turns toward me and comes back. Her body's facing me, but her eyes won't quite meet mine. What is it? All of a sudden, she lowers her he head in a slight bow. Aw, that's nice of her. It's so genuinely un unexpected that all I can do is watch. I can't think of anything to say in return. Once again, Sakaki turns on her, her heel, and this time she doesn't stop. Her feet crunch across the gravel at a steady, controlled pace as she makes her way across the courtyard. Okay, so... That didn't go exactly how I predicted it would. I thought it was going to be... We, the guys attack her, we save her, and then she falls in love with us. Doesn't seem like that happened. We, the guys attacked her, we saved her, and she's like, Thanks, but don't do that again. Okay. By appearance, at least, she's already back to the Sakaki Yumiko that I know. I watch her as she goes, thinking back over the events of that day. Have to say, though, that was strange. The people who came after us today were, without a doubt, the standard crew of moderately skilled hooligans, 
But there's one thing that's been bothering me. They came at me one by one. Take it. Yes! That's what I pointed out, too! They were taking turns, like something out of a manga. That makes absolutely zero sense. All three of their tough guys should have rushed at me at once. Heck, even the five they had bringing back for support. The sheer numbers would have made it difficult even for me, especially with Sakaki to protect. Divide and conquer is the basic rule of fighting when outnumbered, and they went out of their way to divide themselves for me. No matter how I look at this, it just doesn't add up. It might just be a coincidence, but there's a possibility it means something. Better to figure, out, uh, figure it out now rather than run into some nasty surprise down the road. Guess JB would be the person to ask. Visions of a shaggy-headed know-it-all blonde floating unpleasantly before my eyes, I, follow, simply, I slowly follow Sakaki's path toward the dorm. Well, I think that's where I am going to end the stream for today. I think we've had enough tea for today. Yeah, so, Grisea, that was interesting. The first half of the stream was deeply uncomfortable, and the second half was actually pretty great. That kind of, that kind of perfectly summarizes the Grisea experience right there. That first stream back. The first half kind of sucked, and the second half was actually pretty great. All right, yeah, that that that's a pretty accurate summary. Yeah, it's a short stream. I told you so. A couple reasons why I'm ending the stream. One is just I think that's a pretty good spot to stop in terms of the plot. We just did something exciting. I am out of water, so I will need to get more. My voice, even with all the water, is starting to go. Uh, and on top of it, whenever I stream, I'm not. I can't have the air conditioning or the heating on. Uh, just because it's very loud and generally adds background noise that I don't like. So I've been roasting in here in this tiny little recording room, and it's very hot, and I'm sweaty, and I need to turn the air conditioning on. So, yeah, that's how it's gonna be. Yeah, yeah, it is It is short for a weekend stream. I normally stream for longer on the weekend, but that's just how it, ha that's just how it happens with the Grisea streams. Visual novel streams in general, I can't stream for as long because... All of the reading of text does take a toll on my voice. We will be streaming tomorrow, Monday. We'll be going back to Hollow Knight. And then Wednesday, we will not be streaming Hollow Knight. We will actually be doing a very special stream for my birthday. So I, I originally had something planned for my birthday, but I've decided to change it for something else, and it's going to be great. It's go I, I'm so excited for it. It's going to be great. And then Grisea streams will happen weekends, usually on Saturday at 1 p.m. But if I'm busy on a Saturday, then I'll push it to Sunday and let people know. So thank you all for joining in. This is definitely going to be an interesting experience. Uh, hopefully it doesn't take too long to finish Grisea, and we can go on to some other games after that. So hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your weekend, a great start to your week, and God bless everyone.